Hi class, Dr. Jim here. In this lecture, we're going to actually look at what happens when meiosis goes wrong. And so in the last lecture, I showed you that during meiosis, we get that equal division of cells and the number of chromosomes gets reduced in half. Okay, but what happens when it doesn't go right? Okay, and that you end up with a cell with too many or too few chromosomes. And we have situations like that that, that can occur. And what happens when the too few or too many come together with the sperm or egg, and again, we have issues or genetic disorders that can occur. And so in this lecture, we're kind of going to take a look at some of the genetic disorders that can occur when the meiosis process doesn't go correctly. All right, so let's take a look at these things. So first of all, we're going to look at what changes can occur in the chromosome number, and what are these called? And so typically what happens is that you have a normal number of chromosomes. For us, we have 46. But what happens if we get one too many or one too few? What is that called and what happens? Why does that happen? Okay. The process that does that is called non-disjunction. It's basically where the chromosomes don't divide evenly. And that goes through the process of meiosis. So we're going to look at where that can take place in meiosis and why that happens. And then look at some of the disorders that it can cause. Probably the most common one that you have heard of before is called trisomy 21. And that is also known as Down syndrome. And that's where you have actually three copies of chromosome 21 as opposed to the normal two that you're supposed to have. Okay. The third thing we're going to look at is that some of the changes that can occur in the chromosome structure. So we're not changing the number of chromosomes per se, but what you're doing is changing the structure by either adding genes, deleting genes, flipping them, or uh, transversing them in certain different ways. And so if we change the structure of the chromosome, we can change the number of genes we have, maybe change or delete some of the genes we have, doing some different things that way, and that can cause problems as well. And so we're gonna look at all these different types of things and what effect they have on genetic issues or genetic problems that they can cause, okay? So, we have what is normal genes. So most people have the normal number of genes, which is 46, or normal number of chromosomes, which is 46, and we have 23 pairs, okay? When you have the normal, you're called eutoplady, that you have the normal number or true number of chromosomes, okay? However, if you have too many or too few, you're known as aneuploidy, which means they either have too many chromosomes or too few chromosomes. If you, and this results from a process called non-disjunction, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Non-disjunction is where basically in the process of meiosis, you don't get the right number of chromosomes splitting in one cell or the other. You can have the situation which is called monosomy, in which you have one chromosome pair or one chromosome, or you can have what is called trisomy, in which you actually have three chromosomes as opposed to the two. So all this means is that you either get one more or one less than what is expected in these situations, okay? So I talked about non-disjunction, and all non-disjunction means is that the chromosomes don't divide evenly. Okay, During normal meiosis, what would happen is that your chromosomes would split. You'd get one in this cell and one in this cell. However, if non-disjunction takes place at meiosis 1, what happens is that all the chromosomes end up in one cell and none in this other one. And then so through we go through this process. These cells have no chromosomes, so they end up with two cells that have only one chromosome and two zygotes that actually have three. And that's one way that that could happen. The other way that non-disjunction could happen is that basically having your normal cell divides normally through meiosis one, you get the normal reduction. Then during division part where you reduce the number or after reduction of the number, you actually do cell division and let's say the cells don't divide the chromosomes evenly in that case. And so now what happens is that you get individual chromosomes and so in these two situations you get a normal situation. In this cell you get three and in this cell you get one. And so any of these variety of possibilities could occur depending on where non-disjunction happens. All the disjunction means is that you get an unequal splitting of the chromosomes, either in the first stage of meiosis or in the second stage. And you can kind of see the results and what would happen to the zygote if that takes place. Now, I mentioned before, probably the most common type that we've heard or we're most familiar with is called trisomy 21. And this is where you actually have three of the same chromosome. And in this case, the chromosome is chromosome 21. And so you end up with three of those. Okay. This is also known as Down syndrome, and this is characterized by a few different characteristics, so you might see these in people that have these things. Typically, they're short in stature. 
they have an eyelid fold, they have a flat face, they have stubby fingers, and then they have a wide gap between their first and second toes. And these are just some of the physical traits that you see. Probably the most common types are what you see with the facial features, especially with the eyes and maybe the flattened face and things like that, um, with that associated. There's also learning disabilities and other things that can occur as well in these situations. And again, this all results from having one too many chromosomes in your cells. Okay, and that's called trisomy 21. And again, the way that they identify it is they do the karyotype, and they can see that they have actually too many chromosomes in the 21, the pair 21, and that's called trisomy 21. Okay, and this is the typical features that you see with someone with trisomy 21. Happens quite a quite a bit of the time, and especially as the age of the mom or dad increases, the more likelihood of these types of things can occur in in the um, zygote. Okay. Other things that can happen are changes in the sex chromosome number. So you remember I told you you had 22 somatic cells or somatic chromosomes and you have one pair of uh, sex chromosomes. This determines whether you're male or female. Well sometimes you can get either too many X's or not enough X's and not enough Y's. Things can happen in these situations and we have situations that can occur from this. The first type of non-disjunction that can occur is called Turner syndrome, in which the female gets one X and no other letters, so they're basically called XO, and so they get one single X chromosome, so they're a monosomy in this situation, only one sex chromosome, and what happens is that they end up with that they still look female because they only have the X, but they have some, again, appearance issues and things like that, can be, again, maybe not affect um, intelligence or physical abilities, but again, you can be more like a female with hormone therapy and things like this. But again, more, mostly where you see this is in development and also in physical appearance that affects it. Now, another type of syndrome is called Klinefelter syndrome, and this is called XXY. The first one was Turner syndrome, if I didn't mention that. This is Klinefelter's where you get too many X's. So this is a trisomy that takes place where you get one too many X's, but you still will be a Y. This is a male, okay, because they have the Y. Because the Y is there, they are a male, but they get underdeveloped testes and a prostate, and they might have some breast overdevelopment. So again, some physical problems. They tend to have longer arms and legs and very large hands. And they have near normal intelligence, just like anyone else, so it doesn't seem to affect the intelligence as much as like trisomy 21 or some other disorders. But you do see um, where you can actually get multiple X's, not just one extra X, but maybe two or even the case three extra X's in those situations. And that can affect the intelligence because, again, the more chromosomes you start getting, the more that you start playing around with the genetics of the individual. Okay. No matter how many X chromosomes present, the presence of the Y makes these guys always men. Okay, the Y always makes the individual male in those situations, and that's important as well. Okay, so let's take a look at an individual that would have Turner syndrome, and again, they're missing the other X in this situation. They're female because again, they don't have the Y, and they only have the X, so they would be female. They're missing the one, and so this would be a monosomy of the X. In this situation, this is called Klinefelters. Klinefelters, they have too many X's, so this is actually a trisomy because you have three chromosomes in the sex chromosomes. You have two X's and a Y. And again, because they have the Y, these individuals are always male. Okay, and so these are just some uh, interesting examples that can occur in the sex chromosomes. So we have not only the somatic, which are the first 21 pairs, but also that can occur in the somatic or in the sex chromosomes, which is the 23rd pair, the X and the Y. Okay, that can occur. All right, what else can occur in the chromosome? So now we're not talking so much about differences in chromosome number, but actually in the structure itself. And so I've talked about differences that can occur, including deletions of your genes. So this is where you lose either one end or both ends of the gene itself or the chromosome, and it breaks off. You can have duplications where you actually duplicate the number of genes that you have, and so you might get a duplication of a chromosome on another part of a chromosome. You might get a translocation where a piece of the chromosome ends up on another chromosome piece or another piece or on another chromosome altogether. And so there's a lot of different things can, that can take place. Okay? 
And then also there's an inversion where actually the whole chromosome can flip over on one or the other. And so you get reverse order of some of the genes as well. And so there's a lot of different changes that can occur in chromosome structure itself. Doesn't mean that you're going to have differences in genes or differences in the number of chromosomes, but you're going to get the differences in how the genes actually present themselves. You might have too many genes. You might not have enough. You might delete. You might invert. They might be found on different chromosomes. And those all can lead to different problems that can occur in the genetics. Okay, So here again it's just showing you in a picture format of what I'm talking about. A deletion would be a loss of the gene. So in this situation you lose the A gene. In this one, this duplication, you actually duplicate the DNA gene. So now you have two copies of the same gene. Here's the inversion where instead of C and D you now get it inverted that D is on one side and C is on the other. And here is where you have the translocation, and basically it flips. So the G and H end up on another chromosome, and the Q and R end on a totally different chromosome. And so these are all different types of genetic uh, changes that can occur just to the chromosome structure itself. That doesn't mean changes in number, but changes in the chromosome itself, okay, leading to mutations. One of these is a deletion, and so there are many deletions out there, but this one is a common occurrence that's called Williams syndrome, and this is a deletion in chromosome 7. And so what happens here is that you actually lose some of the genes, and I think this got moved up or moved down on, on me, but actually you lose the gene H, okay? What happens is these children have a pixie-like appearance, so they have the pointed noses, the ears are kind of... Uh, in a slight way, their cheeks are a little bit different, and it's due to a loss of protein. So they actually lose this protein. They can have developmental issues. They can also have some issues with cardiac, uh, their organs and things like that. It's an elastin program and codes for elastin, which keeps things flexible in that. And so you can have some different issues with these things, and this one's called Williams syndrome. And there are a number of different syndromes like this out there that can cause problems with deletions and and inversions and other things like that. I just want you to be aware of them. I'm not going to ask you specifics, but I just want you to know that these things are out there. Okay? And so to summarize this lecture, pretty short one today, you have non-disjunction, which means that you don't get the even division of chromosomes during meiosis. And so you either end up with too many or too few in the cell. And that can lead to either trisomy, where you have too many or three pairs, three of a kind, or monosomy where you only end up with one chromosome instead of two. The most common example of this is Down syndrome or trisomy 21 where you end up with uh, three chromosomes as opposed to the normal two. And then we can also change the chromosome and structure which can lead to some genetic issues. And again, that means either deletion, duplication, inversion, or translocation of the genes on a chromosome to another spot or to other parts of chromosomes and so that can lead to genetic abnormalities as well and we saw the one example which is called Turner syndrome and that was a deletion of a certain protein that you see on chromosome 7. Okay and with that we come to the end of the lecture if you have any questions on anything feel free to ask again just know the processes don't worry yourself so much, so much about the different types of disorders we just want you to be aware of the what can happen Okay, you either get too many, too few, or some of these deletions, translocations, things like that. All right, feel free to ask questions, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.